What's in my water? What's in here? Many of the problems Pennsylvania farmers Carolyn Knapp and Carol French have with hydrofracking boils down to the water. Both believe it's responsible for their family's health problems. It comes out of the faucet and it pretty much, it looks like this, it's white and pearly. And when you let it set, you'll see a, a gathering of sand underneath. That's Carol's water on a bad day. Loss. When I visited, things looked better, like but not by much. My water never gelled like jello ever. Never has it ever done that. I can smell it. So that's, that's what you have to do every day. You have to go to your faucet. You have to um, find out whether your water is good today. This is the water that came out of Carol's tap. It's kind of jelly. There's bubbles in it. It doesn't look so great. This is water that came from a jug at Walmart. It's clear. It tastes like water. It's something you would drink. So the question is, would you drink this? Would you cook with this? Would you wash your clothes with this? Would you shower with this? Can you put a price on clean water? I asked that question to Neil Vital, an organic dairy farmer in Woodhull, New York, who was in favor of hydrofracking. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to answer that because I'm not risking it. This was just the water that came out of her tap. I then showed Neil the water from Carol's tap taken earlier that day. EPA would have shut this whole industry down if this was doing this to the water. Then how do you explain I, I, I can't explain it. But Carolyn thinks she can, saying gas companies like Chesapeake get special treatment. They're exempted from numerous things from the Safe Drinking Water Act. They're, they're exempted from the Superfund Act. They can come in and make a disaster of this area leave, we have to clean and pay for it. Another thing that may need explaining, why did the Pennsylvania farmers sign contracts with the gas companies in the first place? A lot of these people that have problems, they just signed on the, on the, on the dotted line without going to a lawyer, without being a member of a coalition. All three farmers say they've been signing leases with the gas companies for decades so the companies could receive government subsidies. We were accustomed to signing for many, many years. It was nothing uh, out of the ordinary. And the other thing is that we trusted people. They knew that we, we are trustworthy people. And when someone comes to you and you ask questions, when you shake your hand with someone after they've answered your questions, you believe that what they say is in those written words that you've just signed. They weren't. In New York, the future of hydrofracking is uncertain as Governor Cuomo waits for a Department of Environmental Conservation review on the process's potential health effects. But whichever side you take, farmers on both sides are sending clear messages and standing by what they believe. This will come someday to New York, you know, when that's going to be, you know, that's anybody's guess anymore. They pretty much have taken our retirement away from us. They t they've taken our family. Um, I think we lost it all. Reporting from Ulster, Pennsylvania and Woodhull, New York, I'm Katie Corrado.